Hello, my peeps. Hey, and welcome to another Power Packed Phillips podcast. In case you missed the news over the break. Yes, I am happy. All right, welcome to another Power Packed Phillips podcast. I hope you had a restful and productive break. Let's take a look at our MSAs. First MSA, homework tonight is workbook page 53, problems 7 and 8. Don't forget that you will get a new EOC review packet later this week. Your district quiz will be on Friday, and we no longer have to say Mr. Phillips will be looking for week seven scores because believe it or not, they are in. Hey, congratulations. Oh, wait a second. That's Mr. McGrath's fifth period class finishing 15th, not you. Loser. Hey, hey, there we go. There's Mr. Phillips' class holding that number 25. Congrats, super Hella fractions. Mr. Phillips will get a check mark for you. And let's see where the rest of you fall. There's the fraction freeloaders at number 35. That certainly deserves a good job. Good job. But no check mark because you did not finish in the top 25. And There we are. Math Munchers certainly deserves a good job at 42. Good job. But you know it. No check mark for you. You did not finish in the top 25. So there are our Math 7 EOC results. Just a friendly reminder, don't forget you will need to complete four podcasts during this third quarter or during the next nine weeks, some of you already have some of those podcasts done. Which podcast do you need to complete for the third quarter? That's an excellent question. Too bad you're on Proby. Go to the announcements page in Blackboard. The four podcasts that you need to complete during the next nine weeks are under the announcements in Blackboard. To finish out our MSAs, there will be online tutoring tonight. After school tutoring this week, Mr. Phillips will take Tuesday. Mr. McGrath will do Thursday. And that concludes our MSAs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, let's start today's lesson. Woo-hoo! This will be... Lesson 5.6. So if you would write in your spiral, lesson 5.6, fit a line to data, or you can call this lesson scatter plots. BRB. So you say, or you ask, what is a scatter plot? Great question. A scatter plot, as you can see the definition on your screen, is a graph used to determine whether there is a relationship between the data. Scatter plots can show trends in the data. So scatter plot shows a relationship between the data and it can show a trend. There's basically three types of scatter plots. Easy pleasy. We have scatter plots that show a positive correlation, scatter plots that show a negative correlation, and scatter plots that show no correlation. So let's take a minute to look at the three types of scatter plots. The first one shows a positive correlation. You might want to draw a picture like this in your spiral. Draw yourself a corner grid, put yourself dots, and make it so that all the dots are going up and to the right. Notice that the dots are all going up 
and to the right. This tells us that the scatter plot has a positive correlation. As y goes up, x goes up. As y increases, x increases. This is kind of like a positive slope. Mr. Phillips likes this type of roller coaster. So let's look at an example of a positive correlation. So here we have a scatter plot. You do not have to draw this one. Just watch. Notice again how all the dots are going up and to the right. We have test scores and hours of studying. The scatter plot shows a positive correlation between the hours of studying and test scores. This means that as the hours of studying increase, the test scores increase. So as we studied more, our test scores went up. This is a positive correlation. Let's move on to the next type of scatter plot. This type of scatter plot has a negative correlation. If you would, please draw the coordinate grid on your paper and put your dots or your data points so they're all going down and to the right. Down and to the right. This scatter plot, as we said, has a negative correlation because they're all going down and to the right. That is like a negative slope like a negative slope. Mr. Phillips hates, I don't care what you say, he hates this kind of roller coaster. Now, you may like it, but Mr. Phillips hates this kind of roller coaster. So, negative correlation, scatter plot. Here's an example again. Do not write this example down, just watch. Hours of television watched, and test scores. The scatter plot shows a negative correlation between the hours of television watched and test scores. This means that as the hours of television watched increase, the test scores decrease. So the peep who watched six hours of television scored lower than the peep who watched two hours of television. Again, negative correlation. All of the dots are going down and to the right. Hey, don't fall asleep. We're almost done. Please draw a picture of this scatter plot in your spiral. Notice on this scatter plot, the dots are not going up and to the right. Notice on the scatter plot that the dots are not going all down and to the right. The scatter plots are all over the place. So if they're all over the place, we say that there is no relationship or no correlation. No relationship, no correlation. So here's an example. The scatter plot shows the number of hours spent watching football and the IQ of a person. There is no relationship between hours spent watching football on TV and how smart a person is. No relationship. Last example. We also can use equations to model data in a scatter plot. So let's take a look at this example. You do not have to write it down, but please watch. In the following scatter plot, the first thing I notice is that my dots have a tendency to go down and to the right. So since all my dots are going down and to the right, that's going to tell me that it has a negative slope, or we can say that it has a negative correlation. Negative slope or negative correlation. Not a positive, but a negative. So I'm going to come up here and look at my answers. And I see that this is a negative. This is a negative. 
this is a positive, so I'm going to get rid of that one. And this is a positive, I'm going to get rid of that one. Now I'm down to two choices. Well, very conveniently for me, here is a point plot it right on my y intercept. So this is going to be my y intercept. So if I were to draw myself a line going through my y intercept, I see that this is an integral of 2. So this is going to be 4. This should be 6. And that will be 8. So for my visual people, I just want 2, 4, 6, 8. So my y-intercept here is going to be positive 8. I'm going to come back up here. That's negative 6. Nope. That's positive 8. Yes. C would be the best choice. And that's our alarm saying that we are out of time. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for our next podcast where we talk about a line of best fit. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Keep it real.